Hi everyone, today I'm gonna to walk you through my top 10 free workflows that are absolutely on par with, if not stronger than, many paid solutions out there. If your PC is on the weaker side, just like mine, you can still use all of these workflows comfortably by switching to a cloud solution such as Running Hub. Running Hub is a cloud-based, comfy UI platform where creators share their own workflows and setups, which you can simply download as JSON files and run locally on your PC if you have enough power. But since not everyone has a high-end machine, I strongly recommend using Running Hub in the cloud. You get access to other people's optimized setups and can run heavy workflows smoothly without needing a monster PC at home, without any unnecessary complications. There is a dedicated workflow that automatically converts vertical videos into horizontal ones. I'll be using my plugin for better presentation. It's connected directly to Running Hub and works exactly the same as if you were running everything on the website. I'll include direct links to all 10 workflows in the description so you can start testing them right away, whether you're running them locally or in the cloud. We're starting with this face as our reference and we want to swap it onto this target image. For this demonstration, I'm using an in-painting face swap workflow that works especially well for close-ups. I'll include all the necessary links in the description. The process is very straightforward. You load your reference image, load your target image, and then simply click Generate. Once the render is done, you'll see a result like this. Let's compare. Original and face swapped. The resemblance is extremely accurate. Even with additional details like sunglasses, the workflow handles everything nicely, preserving both identity and style. I also have a few earlier workflows that I used before this version. As I mentioned, this setup is optimized for close-ups. If you're working with medium shots, you can combine or switch between a couple of different workflows. For example, one of them was designed for stylized or cartoon characters. However, as you can see in those tests, the results on cartoons were not ideal. One workflow gave a slightly distorted face and the other also failed to match the character properly. So in more extreme cases, like when the reference and target faces are very different, you may end up with a blended look, almost like a mix of two different people. If you want a clean, consistent face swap, always try to use a close-up of the face only as your reference. That gives the model the most reliable data and helps it lock in the identity. This setup is what I consider my workflow number 10, and it's currently my go-to solution for face swaps. It also performs very well across different angles. For example, if your input images are rotated or shot from the side, the face still swaps nicely and stays consistent from frame to frame. Even when the character is turning or slightly tilted, the swap remains stable and the expression is preserved. Now let's move on to the next part, infinite talk image to video. Here's the input image, a thumbnail from one of my previous videos. It's impressive how much has already changed and improved, and that video was recorded only about a month ago. In this example, we pair that static image with an audio line. Need perfect color harmony fast? Motion Tools Pro's power. All of that is driven by our Infinite Talk version 2 workflow. We're constantly improving it. Need perfect color harmony fast? Motion Tools Pro's palette widget now generates color schemes instantly. And the results are getting smoother and more expressive with every iteration. As you can see, the image is animated in sync with the voiceover. The character moves naturally, and the lip sync looks convincing. It even works on cartoon-style characters and animal mascots, so you're not limited to realistic humans. Using it is very simple. You select an image, select an audio track, and click Generate. In just a short time, you'll get a fully animated talking character based on your static image, ready to drop into your edits, tutorials, or promos. All right, the next one is Infinite Talk Vid to Vid. Let me show you how it works. Here we have the original video clip and a separate audio line. The video is just a regular performance shot and the audio is a short vocal phrase. Nice. When we run it through the vid to vid workflow, the system analyzes the audio
and automatically syncs the character's mouth and expressions to that sound. Oh my! As you can see, the lip sync looks very natural, and it works across different camera angles, close-ups, medium shots, and wider frames. Even when the camera moves or the character turns, the synchronization remains solid, which makes it perfect for more dynamic edits. The same approach also works beautifully on cartoon characters. We feed in the original animated video, apply a new vocal track, and the system adjusts the character's mouth shapes to match the new audio. It's an improved setup that now works very reliably and gives consistent results across a wide range of footage. It really does work like a charm. Next, let's talk about outfit change. For the best results, I'm using a curated collection of models in different poses. At the start, you pick a base image of the model, standing, posing, or moving, and then you select the outfit you'd like to apply. In the interface, you simply choose the outfit change workflow. Select your source image, then select the outfit asset or reference and click Generate. The system will replace the clothing while keeping the original body shape, pose, and identity intact, producing something like this updated look. You can repeat the same process with another image. Select the new photo, pick a different outfit, generate, and you instantly get a fresh variation with consistent style. It also works with single clothing items. For example, if you only want to change the top, like swapping just the jacket or shirt, you can do that without affecting the rest of the outfit. This is very useful when you need multiple looks from the same model while maintaining continuity in pose and environment. For the most stable results, I recommend first choosing a model face and pose that you like. You can simply double-click the model in your asset panel, and it will be added to your board as the base for your outfit changes. So, when you choose the face, and then choose the pose, you'll get a result that brings the face much closer to what you need. It may not be a one-to-one -one match, but the haircut, general proportions, and overall style will be in the right direction, which is usually enough for a believable character. As you can see, the result already looks quite good. At any point, you can always return to the very first workflow I showed you, the face swap for close-ups. My recommendation is to apply the face swap as the final step in your pipeline, after you've finished all the styling, outfit changes, hair, and background. I'll show you exactly what I mean. Let's look again at a single item example. You take the base image, select the outfit, and generate the result. In this case, only one clothing element is changed, but the rest of the image stays intact. The same principle applies to haircuts. The outfit change system is very flexible. It can change almost everything about the styling. For example, you start with a single image of your subject, then you pick an outfit reference. In this case, the outfit is just the haircut. You click Generate, and you instantly get a completely new hairstyle applied to the same character. This also works for background changes. Again, you have your subject image, and you treat the outfit as the background reference. You select the subject, select the background image as the reference, and generate. The model keeps the original person and pose, but replaces the environment behind them. You can see how the background is changing while the character remains consistent. So here's my recommended workflow. First, do all your customization, haircuts, outfits, and background changes until you get the final look that you're happy with. At that stage, you have your hero image, but the face may still not be perfectly close to the original person. As a last step, run the close-up face swap workflow on that final image. After the face swap, the likeness improves dramatically and becomes much closer to your reference you can clearly see how much better and more accurate the face looks after this final pass. Now, let's move on to the next workflow, 3D Rotation. We're using 3D Rotation version 2, which is much more flexible and can handle some pretty extreme poses. The process is simple. You select an image, click Generate, and the system creates a rotated version of your subject, simulating a true 3D turn in space. 
I tested this on some of the hardest cases I could find, and it still worked impressively well. Even when the character is in a complex pose, the rotation looks natural, almost as if it were captured in real life with a moving camera. For example, this character is rotated exactly the way you would expect if you physically walked around them with a camera. This is incredibly useful for video work, especially for music videos, creative edits, or stylized sequences. You can simulate a bullet time effect by taking a single frame from a video, applying this 3D rotation workflow, and then using the generated frames in your edit. It works with real people, adds extra motion, and gives you dynamic angles that would otherwise require complex 3D setups. In short, the 3D rotation workflow is very powerful. Use it whenever you want to add cinematic movement or bullet time style shots from just a single image. Next, let's jump to the storyboard generator. In the previous steps, we created our main character. We defined the outfit, the model, the hairstyle, and the background. This is now our main actress, or hero character. Now we want to use this character to generate a full storyboard for a scene or a music video. To do that, we open the storyboard generator workflow. You select your reference image, the one with the final look you like, and then enter a prompt describing the overall mood, style, and scenario. You can specify how many scenes you want. Technically, you can ask for something like 24 scenes, but for my tests, it works best with up to 12 scenes at a time. You can always generate multiple sets if you need more shots. So the process is, choose the image, write your prompt with the mood and scene count, and click Generate. The workflow will then create a sequence of storyboard frames based on your character and your description. If you're using flashboards, you can also click on a frame and add a note, for example, to save or tweak your prompts, or to remember specific direction ideas. Once the storyboard is generated, you can hold Shift, select all frames, and double-click to open them and view the entire sequence. You'll see that the character remains consistent, the shots feel cohesive, and the composition looks like a proper storyboard for a real production. All of these storyboard images can then be used as input for the next workflows, like image-to-video or camera-driven animation. The next step is Sora image-to-video. Here, I recommend preparing shots like the ones we just created. Close-ups of the face, medium shots, and all those storyboard frames with consistent styling. You then choose one of these frames, the one you want to bring to life, and upload it to Sora as your input image. Sora will generate a short video based on that frame and your text prompt. In the workflow, you go to Image to Video Sora 2. You select the image, type a simple prompt, for example, music video, with a short description of the action, and set the duration, like 10 seconds. Keep in mind you typically have five free runs per day with 10 second videos, so be mindful of that limit. The nice part is that this workflow automatically bypasses some of Sora's restrictions. Because Sora doesn't support real people directly, the pipeline first converts your image into an illustration style version, then back into a video. The result is a stylized, animated clip that still feels close to your original character. As you've seen in the examples, this can produce very cinematic music video shots with dynamic motion and expressive movement, all starting from a single image and a short vocal or musical line. Next, we also have a video restoration step. If you compare the original video and the restored version side by side, you can see how much the quality improves. The workflow acts like an upscaler. It sharpens details, reduces noise, and cleans up compression artifacts. In clips where there is visible grain, banding, or noise, especially in darker scenes, the restoration pass significantly improves the final look. You can clearly see the before and after. The restored version is cleaner, crisper, and simply looks more professional. Now, let's talk about the video-driven image workflow, which is also very powerful. Here's how it works. 
you have a single input image of your character. You also have a reference video with a camera move or a performance you like. This could be a famous music video, a dance clip, or any dynamic shot. You load the image and the reference video into the camera movement workflow. The system then copies the camera motion, and often the pose dynamics, from the reference video and applies it to your still image. You can use all kinds of reference videos, for example, a dance performance. In many cases, the workflow will not only replicate the camera path, but also approximate the pose and motion from the original footage, so your character feels like they're part of that same movement. From just a single image, the system copies the camera movement and gives you a dynamic shot that feels like it came from a real camera move. Finally, let's look at the last workflow, which is probably my favorite, replace character on video. This is the key to keeping a consistent character, especially when Sora or other generative tools produce faces that don't always look like you. With this workflow, you take a video generated by Sora or another model and replace the character's face with your own reference photo. You simply feed in the source video with the character you want to replace, your reference face image. Then, the system runs a character replacement pass. The result is that you get your own face on top of the generated performance, with expressions and angles that you can see how well it works, even in shots without sunglasses. And you can push it further with stylized effects or more extreme looks. You can combine this with earlier workflows, outfit changes, hair, background, camera-driven motion, to create very complex and polished sequences, all while keeping the same recognizable character. So, overall, by chaining these workflows, outfit change, background and hair customization, storyboard generation, Sora image to video, video restoration, camera-driven motion, and finally, character replacement, you can build a full, high-quality video pipeline that keeps your character consistent from start to finish. As I mentioned previously, you can always use Pinterest as a powerful source of ideas and image references for your character and visual style. If Pinterest is great for static image inspiration, then iCandy is absolutely perfect for video references. There you'll find a huge collection of stunning video effects transitions, camera moves, and creative concepts that you can borrow and adapt for your next project. By simply using the character replacement on video workflow with these kinds of references, I created this showcase for you, so you can clearly see what's possible. And the best part is, you can achieve all of this for free, as long as you have a decent PC and are ready to experiment a bit with these tools and workflows. By using these 10 free workflows, your creative possibilities are practically endless, all without spending a cent. If you'd like to see a direct comparison between free workflows and paid ones, give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to make a follow-up breakdown.